Hey, so this topic is a pretty powerful one. Uh, it's called demographic transition. There's a little bit of controversy uh, with it because building it involves a bit of uh, judging people from poor countries, but I don't believe that's the case. Uh, basically, it's a way of trying to help humanity avoid catastrophe by figuring out how we can limit population growth. I don't know why I have that circle there. Anyway, uh, so, so the demographic transition model is one in which we look at how population growth changes over time in response to changes in birth rate and death rate. There's nothing surprising about that. But what's different here is that we're going to look at what it is that causes birth rate and death rate to change and link them to changes in a society's industrial situation, like they're, they're where they are technologically, where they are in terms of infrastructure, basically moving from a pre-industrial to a developing nation to a fully developed nation. So let's just, so basically we can say, <clears throat> that there are are five different stages of it, four that are on the AP test. Uh, and we're going to look at each of these in turn and see what happens to the population in each of them. Okay, so the stage one, which is over here, uh, you notice that we have a high birth rate and a high death rate. And, and notice how we have this, this overshoot and, and uh, die off. Uh, basically, the idea is in this stage, we have a very high birth rate and we have a very high death rate. We have a high birth rate because we have a high death rate. Uh, and because both are high, there isn't much uh, growth in the population. The population growth rate pretty much stays at its carrying capacity at zero growth rate. Uh, and, and basically, why is the death rate so high? Well, it's because there's limitations on food and sanitation and medical care because, because people get sick and, and people are hungry, they die pretty fast. And to compensate for that, people have lots of babies because they need to have children around to help them in order to, to um, do subsistence farming. So usually cultures that, that are at this point, and there aren't any on the planet currently, uh, it's all about subsistence farming. Your family grows, you know, food on a plot of land, and that's what's going to keep you going. There's still parts of the world that are still in this state, but not many, and none of them are actually in this state. They've they've been able to man manage to push through this a little bit. But what you find is there are wide populations in in uh, wide fluctuations in population side due to changes in food supply. You know, there's a drought. There's if there's a, a infestation of some kind of bugs, people starve to death. So the population changes a lot. And prior to the 18th century, essentially every country on the planet, the whole world population was in this mode. Now, take a look at uh, what an, an, uh, an A-structure diagram looks like. It's this Christmas tree look. It's really heavy on the, the infants and children and very small on the old people. So it's got this, this upward curve to it. So that's sort of the, the uh, hallmark of the stage one uh, pre-industrial stage in the demographic model. Now, let's talk about stage two. We call this the transitional stage. Now, a few things happen here. First of all, it's characterized by a fall in death rate, which caused the population to increase. Now, look, the population was small before. There was a lot of births, but there was also a lot of deaths, so the population stayed small. But what happens is this. Technological improvements in medicine, in farming, in, in just different agricultural practices, medicine, basically what it does is it reduces the death rate. People don't starve to death. People are given medicine. But what happens is the birth rate stays the way it was because people are used to the idea of I have to have a lot of babies in order to uh, provide for my family. And as a consequence of that, population skyrockets. So basically, you know, stage two is characterized by a fall in the death rate due to improvement in sanitation and agricultural practices, uh, a, a, a still a high birth rate, uh, and it's basically because people have expectations of how big a family is supposed to be. I mean, my my mom had six kids, six. She was from a farm in the Midwest. That's just what people did. They needed kids to work the farm. Uh, I had two, and that's pretty typical what happens as you transition out of the stage. Now, um, unfortunately, the largest decrease in death in these cultures tends to be, uh, I shouldn't say cultures, in, these, in, in cultures that are in this transitional stage, there's a high infant mortality and a high child mortality. So, so babies, you know, children, children under one and, and, and children under five, they tend to have very high death rates. And as a consequence, uh, we see that there's this expansion at the base of the pyramid. Uh, and, and there's a number of, of countries in this. I'm not going to list what they are. I'm going to let you figure that out in an assignment we're doing. Now, in the industrial stage, which is stage three on this diagram here, notice what's happening here. The birth rate is beginning to drop. So now, 
uh, the death rate is falling still, the death or the birth rate is falling, but still the population is going to continue to increase because we still have more births than deaths. So we're going to have an increase in population, but not at that same alarming rate. So the, the rate of increase drops off a bit. And this is because there are, are basically, um, uh, the birth rate is dropping for a number of reasons. One is there's more economic opportunities, especially for women. So if women have uh, a, an opportunity to do something other than have babies, uh, then they tend to put off having babies. Uh, they want to make money. They want to provide for themselves and, they, and, and to provide for a fewer number of children. So they, they feel like, well, if I have fewer kids, but I'm making money, those fewer kids are going to do better in life. Another thing that helps is when they have access to contraception so they can choose wh whether or not to have babies. And basically this goes along with urbanization as people transition out of living in uh, small plots of land where they're doing uh, uh, small-scale farming into more of, of a, a city environment. So urbanization tends to lead to this. Now, don't get wrong, urbanization leads to a lot of other problems, but uh, it definitely causes a transition uh, towards a, um, uh, a slowing of the, of the birth rate. And now, when you look at it, you'll see that the age structure diagram now tends to look more like, unlike the roof of a mosque or something like that. Uh, and, and one that's worth pointing out is, is, is uh, there is no longer a need for large families and also that a, a woman's status in the society becomes more defined by uh, education level and their her her uh, economic status rather than her status as a baby maker. Uh, and so so because you're no longer feeling this pressure to make a lot of babies, you don't. So uh, that definitely brings the, the birth rate down. Now, the next stage is what we call the post-industrial stage. And this is where a lot of the developed world is at this point. Uh, so uh, first of all, let's just look at this, this age structure diagram. We notice it's, it's straight on the sides for the most part and then kind of pinches off as we get old. And, and basically what happens at this point is, uh, and we've talked about this when we talked about age structure diagrams, is uh, each cohort is replaced by the same number of the other cohorts. So, so the population doesn't grow anymore. Essentially what's happened is, the birth rate has come down to match the death rate, and we're like we were in stage one, except at a uh, at basically a population growth of zero. Now the population is higher than it was. It, the population isn't going down, uh, but it isn't going up anymore because the death rate equals the birth rate. Uh, and basically, this comes about when you have a very strong uh, infrastructure, very stable governments that provide you know thoughtful programs for people. Uh, provide lots of economic opportunities. And so what happens is family size gets smaller. People want to provide for their kids. Uh, so what they do is uh, they invest in their education and that costs a lot of money. You find that these countries like this have really quality health care. They have quality education. And as a result, uh, families are, are unwilling to have a lot of kids because they feel it puts their children at a disadvantage. And plus, they know their kids are, are likely to survive. Now, that's as far as this goes on the AP test, but there is one more stage as we're talking about. This is the, the fifth stage, uh, and that is where actually a lot of the countries in the world are right now, including Korea. So basically, here's what happened. Well, at this point, um, economic incentive to not have children has gotten so high that the, the TFR becomes less than the um, replacement fertility rate. So, you know, in industrialized societies, we're talking about 2.1. Uh, is below that. So when TFR gets below 2.1, well, what happens is look at the age structure diagram. It starts getting narrow at the bottom. And that's because there's fewer babies being born uh, each with each successive year. And basically uh, what that, that does is now the death rate pretty much stays the same. Uh, might, it, might, it might decrease a little bit, but the birth rate goes down and that causes the population to drop. And, when that, and that basically happens when you have a very large workforce of women who wait a long time to have children. So now they're waiting into their late 20s, 30s to have children. Remember, the longer they wait, even if they have the same number of children, the slower the, birth, uh, the, slower the growth rate is. Uh, and we find in these cultures that uh, you know it, they have a lot of money, but it's expensive to raise children. And so people practice contraception is widely available. Uh, and the education tends to be expensive in these cultures. So they tend to, to uh, have much fewer children. And... Uh, and only do so when they want them. Another thing, too, in these cultures we find is that uh, there's often um, governmental support for caring for the aged, so people don't feel like they have to have children in order to support them in their old age. 
Uh, and so those are the five stages. Uh, it should make sense. Um, and that's it. Ebony, 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 that's all. <laughs>